Hi, welcome to the VIP room inside the Soul Lounge. I am the Lady DJ, and I'm very excited to have this next artist hanging out with us. Time for a little testosterone in the VIP room. He is an artist that VH1 declared is one or one that you ought to know. And I've been watching him and listening to him for a while, and it is my pleasure to finally have him here inside the Soul Lounge. Russell, thank you so much, Russell Taylor, for being here. It is absolutely my pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. So um, you're originally from Philadelphia, correct? Born and raised. Yeah. Philly cheesesteaks. Yes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure Philly cheesesteaks and a ton of great music oh, because, yeah. I mean, they're deep-rooted soul and mm. and and funk history inside. Uh, yeah. Gamble and Huff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could keep going. Um, I... Philadelphia, I was raised in Philadelphia till, was, till I was 14, okay. and then that's when we moved. My father was a sergeant on Philadelphia police force. My mother was a councilwoman. And, um, like, Philly is part of my blood. Mm. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Now, did you grow up listening to music? Whenever I talk to artists, they say, oh, mm. from the time I was little, my parents would put a record on the record player, and I'd dance around. Was that your story? Indeed. Yeah. So... In my household, um, we had a, a big stereo cabinet with, like, big speakers and everything. And it was a tradition to listen to music on the weekends, like, as a family, as we did work around the house, cleaning up and stuff. And um, with my parents, we listened to, like, all the soul greats, Marvin Gaye, Donny Hathaway, Roberta Flack, Dionne Warwick, like, all of that stuff. Um, and then, but we also listened to Farner and Seals and Croft and uh, Neil Young. And so I had an exposure to, to really all types of music. Mm. And uh, with soul music and gospel, you know, I fell in love with uh, particularly the early stuff. I fell in love with the, with the intent, like a singer delivering with the intent of making you feel something. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with that, okay. the actor in me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was an actor when I was a kid, but that. But then when it comes to the other music, um, like the Seals and Croft and so forth, I fell in love with the storytelling. And uh, there's just a very unique way of folk music, that, you know, to, to get a story across, word choice, phrasing, and so forth. So it was the, the combo kind of has influenced me today. So as long as you've considered yourself an artist, you've also been a songwriter? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And and so these stories, are, are they, have they always been your experiences or would you borrow from other people's stories or the things that you see around you? It's everything. Okay. Um, I have, I have, a mi <laughs> I have a myriad of friends with crazy lives. Um, I, I'm, I was single, like I'm, it's like I'm the only child, but I'm so much younger than my siblings. So I spend a lot of time with my imagination. So I'd make up stories in my head. I'd write things down. So my influences come from everywhere. Um, most recently the song, the, one of the first singles from the forthcoming record war of hearts was inspired by the television show scandal. Um, and the love, the love, hate, uh, I shouldn't do this, but it's so right thing between Olivia and the president. That was uh, that was part of the inspiration, a big part of the inspiration behind War of Hearts. Mm -hmm. And Scandal is a very popular television oh, yeah. show here in the United States and one that uses music mm -hmm. very, very well. I should say that, too. They're yes. sort of setting the trend for bringing in artists that we know and, and mm -hmm. up-and-coming artists as well. Well, you mentioned the forthcoming album. Mm -hmm. Now, you are releasing this independently on your own label. Is that correct? Well. Okay. Um... We'll see. Stay okay. tuned. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask you, though, yeah, about yeah. that idea, the yeah. idea of being an independent artist, because I get so many people who will come to me and say, I want to be an artist. I've got music. I don't know what to do with it, where to go. And there seems to be two, two thoughts. One, you go the route of the big label or because we've got the Internet and there's access mm. to everything. The gatekeepers are gone, so mm. to speak. Being an, an independent artist is, is viable these days. I'm just curious to know where you stand. Okay. So it's changed over the past couple of years for me. Um, I think my experience starting out was that I was 
I was signed to a production development deal to a major when I first started. And then when the president was let go, um, all of the production development de people, myself included, were like artists and stuff were let go as well. So I became an independent artist by uh, necessity. Um, I met Eric Roberson, who is like the king of indie. And Eric said, boy, you got to put this record out. I don't know what I'm doing, Eric. I don't know how to do it. He's like, I'll help you figure it out. And so he gave me a great blueprint. And then also it was up to me to pick the ball up and, and figure it out. Mm -hmm. So my advice going forward is that, and I'm sure Zach, Zach is, my man Zach has played with everyone, um, independent and signed to a major label. Um, I think the best way now is to always go indie first. Okay. Because you have to, there used to be a, a, a space in, in music where artists were groomed. And I don't think that record labels do so much grooming anymore. Mm -hmm. Like they're just, they're not, there are no budgets for it. When you say grooming, what grooming. do you mean? So grooming, uh, Im well, image usually comes first, but music, I believe in the music coming first. So music, there's a difference between singing uh, on YouTube and to just your computer and singing to a crowd of 100 people plus, 5,000 people. Um, you only get that experience by doing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a great um, benefit to, to learning how to, to win a room. And you can't. You only learn that by by playing live. And when I, from from what I can understand from reading, major record labels used to groom artists as far as like you get out, you practice, you play, you learn how to do a room. We'll invest in you over the years, and you'll get better and you'll grow. I don't see that so much. Mm -hmm. Image, like figuring out, you know, who you are as an artist. Uh, where do you fit? What what is your sound? What, how, where do you fit? If you could put yourself on a radio station before and after artists that are already being played, where do you fit? Mm -hmm. And I think as a that's part of the grooming, and as an end of, and then also just be, being able to do interviews, like the, all of these kind of things. When you uh, start out as an independent artist, it you also fortify yourself. Is this something that I really want to do? Yeah. Right. Because there are a lot of setbacks. And so when you get to the time, if you get to that place where you're where you feel strong in the art, in the performance, in the brand of the this artist, then you have the choice of dealing with a major label. OK. All right. Well, let's go back to yeah. image mm -hmm. for a second, because I read an article in the Huffington Post yeah, and it was all about your style. Now, before we go into your style, we do have to address one of your accessories oh, because yeah. someone may look at that and go, is my that the new thing out of Philly? My illustrious, <laughs> beautiful boot. What happened? Okay, so I went to a friend's birthday party in the Bahamas and uh, I had on a pair of Javiana flip-flops and I slipped. Oh. Now, that's the real, that's the truth. Okay. But really what happened was... <laughs> I was on a special FBI mission, and I was skydiving, and I just landed wrong on my leg. Mm, okay. All happened. right. We'll take that. That's your story. You're sticking with it. But let's talk about, though, the idea of aesthetics. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about that with female artists, mm -hmm. but we don't talk much about it with male artists. The assumption is a man can just kind of get on stage and whatever it is that he rolled out of bed in or mm. just found in the closet. But do you think it is important for male artists to be concerned with image and aesthetics i do i think um i think one of the it's such a fine line i think um y you know people okay i can look at myself what do i like what attracts me to an artist i like to be able to relate to the artist i like to be able to uh to connect to the music um, I like an artist that's humble, but also has some something that I aspire to be or something that I desire or, you know, wh whether it be how the artists look. Oh, I wish I had a six pack like that or I, or I like that artist style or, you know, whatever it is. So I think image has to, you can't just roll out of bed. Women, they talk about weight uh, and, and this is not just the artist. I think this is across the board. Women talk about weight and hair and so forth. It's the exact same thing with men because we have to play. We have to be that fine line. We have to 
possess something that people aspire to to be or desire but also relatable and if we just look like we just roll out of bed it's like well okay well yeah i mean yeah. what's special about you you know I, I guess it's also kind of the same thing when you go to work like it, a, a, a nine to five job would you would you go to work you know just rolling out of bed or would you go to work and put some thought into it like Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. We're talking to Russell Taylor. He's hanging out inside the VIP lounge. Um, so, War of Hearts. Yes. The new album, or yes. the forthcoming album. Mm -hmm. We want to hear something from it. I mean, we, we brought you here to talk, but we also brought you here to sing. I would love so, to. So, would you present something? What are we going to do first? War of Hearts. Okay. So, the title track. War of Hearts. Title track. This was this was a song that changed my life. Okay. So, mm. let's do it. People come and go, it kills me real slow. Life at its worst, so much that it hurts. Open up, let you win, don't wanna fall again. Original sin, same story you win. In me and my eyes, took me at a low, still in disguise. We lost all control. I'm battered and warm, a love has a torn. You fought for my heart, you fought for my heart. In this war I conceded, I doubted you believed it. You were all that I needed in this war of hearts. In this war I conceded, I doubted you believed it. You were all that I needed in Dust still in the wind, I can't see to the end. The path is unclear behind my veneer. A new line in the sand of the battle, too. If you don't let me go. I might hurt you again In me and my eyes Took me at low We're still in disguise We lost all control I'm battered and warm A love has been torn You fought for my heart You fought for my heart In this war I conceded I doubted you believed it You were all that I needed War of hearts in this war, I conceded. I doubted you defeated. You were all that I needed in this war of hearts. I was dark, and you were the light that brought me back. Back to life, and it's because you. That brought me back, back to life, and it's because you loved me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This war I conceded, I doubted you believed it. You were all that I needed in this war of hearts. Hey, oh, Ooh. in this war I conceded, I doubted you believed it. You were all I needed. So Russell Taylor inside the VIP room in the Soul Lounge. So you were uh, declared 
one of VH1's. Well, the VH1 has this contest. That's my understanding, and it's called You Ought, you to, ought know. to Know. Mm-hmm. And so let me just say, you're in good company. Bruno Mars, Adele, Ed Sheeran, Lord, all of these artists mm-hmm. have received this sort of coveted award. I'm curious, though, do you ever feel a sense of competition? Are you one of those artists who is just kind of always in your own realm? And Because you hear that. I know every time someone mentions that, they go through that list. Bruno, you know. <laughs> For me, the reason why I say War of Hearts changed my life was because, um, you know, working as an artist and performing, you sometimes feel like... Uh, it's like a thank, thankless job. Like you sometimes there are moments where you're just like, oh my God, everything is wonderful. And then there are times where you're like, nobody cares. <laughs> mm-hmm. No matter how hard I work. And War of Hearts, uh, it started uh, in the summer where I got a call for a placement uh, for the Black Ink Crew, War of Hearts, mm-hmm. which is a, a TV show on VH1 actually. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was like, oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, God, I hear you. And then one thing led to another, and then then the you ought to know situation happened. And it, it was the first crowdsourced uh, um, you ought to know um, for the product, for the brand, you ought to know for VH1. And so I had to have fans vote, and then I won. And for competition when i when i look at the the rest of the people that are you ought to know artists is actually for me it's not competition i had a well, all right let me say i'm going to get back to the you ought to know a long time ago before i had a voice coach who is no longer with us named ruby glover and ruby glover for probably four lessons we didn't even sing we talked and and when we talked she wanted to make sure that my head was right and one of the things that for ye- I mean, this was when I was a kid, so it stays with me. In art, there is no competition. Oh. If you're competing, then there's no way you can get to the heart of your, of your truth for your art. So jumping to the you ought to know thing, when I got this, it was like, okay, people are paying attention. Okay, there is some validation, some mainstream validation here. And... Um, and it's a challenge, like pat on the back, that I made it to where these are artists like Bruno Mars and Adele, all artists that I love who have major backing, and then me. So that means that people see that I have it, I have something, not it, I have something, mm-hmm. and it's up to me to kind of flush it out. Not competition, inspiration. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Exactly. I'm sorry, I'm a little long-winded. No, that's okay, <laughs> but I like that idea mm-hmm. of we use each other to inspire us mm-hmm. to a new height as opposed to constantly competing. Yeah, I got to no tell the truth. No matter what you do, that's true. You can, there's only one truth for Russell Taylor, and I can't compete with anybody to tell that. I just got to tell it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go overseas for a minute because yeah. I understand you have traveled overseas quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Derry, Paris. Yes, London. Yes, keep Amsterdam, going. Okay, Hague. Okay, Corsica. <laughs> All right, <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> so I'm just curious, as an American artist traveling mm-hmm. overseas, and I ask everyone this. Um, does it feel different? Do they receive you different? I hear some artists say there's a sense of freedom there because they're not constrained by the label. Like you're just an artist, not a soul artist or an R and B artist or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the hip hop, you, you're just an artist. Do you feel that way or share your experience? My, tr- when I perform overseas, um, okay, I, I'm I'm being very thoughtful about this, not editing, just thoughtful and deliberate here in the States. I think that there is, and this is kind of taboo, but I'm going to say it. There is a color to genre. There's a race to genre in the States. And I don't think that that's the case uh, in many places in Europe. So, you know, uh, you have art. I mean, the, the case in point, you have Adele. There's a, a whole list of artists. Adele that sings soul music. You have Laura and Vula, who I don't know where you quite put her, but she does like across the board music. And you, uh, Leanne La Havas, D- Daily Sam Smith. Now, like so, you know, regardless of color, they just sing, and you kind of place it somewhere. Like, do I like it or don't I like it? Uh, and I, I overseas when I play. I don't feel that barrier. I feel like people come with an open mind. Mm-hmm. 
And my intention whenever I perform is to make my audience feel like how you come in and how you leave should be different change for the better right, <laughs> right? <Of course. laughs> so um so my intention is always to make someone i do soul music that whatever other category is on top of it i sing my truth to people so you should be changed and I, and i feel that overseas people have an open mind when i step on stage and it's a little more so there than here okay well since you opened the box let's dig into it a little bit about the notion of soul music here in the united states uh -huh. There's this idea, because it is attached to race, mm -hmm. that we don't own it anymore. I've heard certain artists say that. I've heard them say that it's a problem. And then others say, you know, like I had Lettucey here. And Lettucey said, you know My what, it, does, it doesn't matter. You know, we just do what we do. So as an American artist, when you hear this notion that soul music as an expression of the African-American experience is dying... How do you feel? By the way, I love Let Us See. Uh, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> How do I feel? I feel frustrated sometimes because, going back to one of your earlier questions, as an African-American man that sings soul music, I feel that there's an expectation of me to sing about a certain subject matter in a certain way. And... I'm supposed to look a certain way, sound a certain way, and that's all it can be. And, uh, but I don't allow my, I get frustrated sometimes, but I, but then I go back to the truth. If I tell the truth in the music, then it won't make a difference. But when I, when I look at television or I, I see iTunes charts and stuff, sometimes I do get frustrated. I got to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel, oh, well, since I don't fit in this box, then maybe people won't won't partake of it, you know. But I, War of Hearts blasted that frustration out. You know, it's just a perceived, it's a perceived perception, and I just don't drink the Kool Aid. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, good, good. Well, let's hear more music. Then <laughs> yeah, yeah, you talk yeah, about yeah. telling your truth. Yes. So uh, another cut from yes. the forthcoming album. Yes. All right. What is this one? It's called Electric. All right, Russell Taylor. My man, Zach Cutler. Right now, feel it up. 
I love it. That's great. Russell Taylor. I'm hearing a little bit of Howard Hewitt in there. Oh, man. I take that. Okay. No, I mean it as a Howard compliment. Howard Hewitt. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I hear. I don't know. I like that. I love it, actually. That's that's hot. So that's from the War of Hearts album, which is coming out very soon. Yes, indeed. All right. Before I let you go, mm-hmm. uh, you've got to play a game with me. You down? Let's go. You game? All mm-hmm. right. So what's in your ear? That's what it's called. Mm-hmm. I ask everyone three questions, and you just have to answer it. So. We start off, it's Sunday afternoon, you got to clean the house, you got some things to do. We all are there, you know, mm-hmm. laundry to fold, mm-hmm. what's playing in the background? Molly music. Okay, oh yeah. Sunday, Molly music, got to start with a little gospel, soul gospel. Um, Tamar Braxton, I've been playing a lot. Uh, all the Way Home and Pieces of Me. Uh, a throwback I just this is this past Sunday. Well, Molly music is new, but a throwback that I've been really into is the Leanne La Havas and uh, a throwback meaning like a year ago. Um, and um, Laura and Vula. I'm totally into them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's Friday night. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Night, your thing worked out just nice, just perfectly. <laughs> so, okay, you yeah. know, it's romantic night. What's... Teddy Prendergrass. Okay. Turn off the lights. Okay. Uh, that's always the set the mood record. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes I put a little M83. Ah, you got to get into it. Okay. M83 is like ambient mood, right? And a little Jenny Ico. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Let nice. me let me let me set you up with a playlist. <laughs> Can you make a mixtape for I me? <laughs> I got you. And you'll seal the deal every time. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll talk about that after it's over. All right. And then finally, you know that everybody has that music that just makes them feel good when things aren't going mm. the way that they want. That music that inspires you, that lifts you out of darkness. It's really hard to to narrow it. So I'll have to just say, because there are a lot of artists, I'll have to say the most recent one, um, Kirk Franklin. The record, I can't, I don't know the title, but it's the record where he's standing on the top of the mountain with a, uh, um, with a flag in it. Uh, I think it's like Set It Free or something. I just listened to that whole record and it took me to a, it took me up out. Okay. Um, I think there's such power in gospel music, particularly Partic- for me now, like modern gospel, like Kirk Franklin and, and, and artists like Mary Mary, help. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> when you listen to those records, they definitely change. They definitely change you. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. Mary Mary is definitely on my list every day. <sighs> right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Russell Taylor, thank, thank you, you so much. Me. This was so much fun. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. And as always, I appreciate you hanging out with us inside the Soul Lounge. We will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Peace.